Among the shops that did not settle in the 1909-1910 strike was the Triangle Shirtwaist Company. The Triangle Shirtwaist Company was not what you might call a traditional sweatshop. It was located in a fairly new 11-story elevator building in which it occupied the 8th, 9th, and 10th floors. The building was located just off Washington Square, then one of the most elegant living places in the city. Enter the Triangle Shirtwaist Company's workspace and the illusion of modernity and elegance vanished. 500 workers spent six days a week on these three floors, sitting close together at sewing machines lined up on long tables around which a person could maneuver only with difficulty. The floor was covered with lint, fabric, scraps, and threads. It should have been swept up on an hourly or at least a daily basis, but nobody paid much attention to the scraps as they accumulated into small piles. On a Saturday afternoon, March 25, 1911, a fire broke out on the eighth floor of the building in these scraps. The fire spread rapidly. The people who worked on the eighth floor noticed it, tried to get out of the building, and many of them, in fact, caught the elevator and went safely down. The people who worked on the tenth floor felt the smoke coming up through the building vents. Many managed to climb the single set of stairs to the top floor and then clamber onto the roof of the building where they found a path across to the building next door. The workers on the ninth floor were the last to find out about the fire. By then, the elevators had stopped working. The door that was meant to open out to the stairway opened inward instead. Trying to get out, workers piled against the door, trapping themselves and everybody else. Some say that that door was kept locked to prevent workers from stealing pieces of fabric. Firemen found dozens of burned bodies pressed against the inward opening doors. Observers in the street watched as dozens of women, as well as a few men, jumped from the windows. They had waited for the firemen to arrive and then discovered that the firemen's ladders reached only to the sixth floor. With flames licking at their heels, women jumped from the windows. The safety nets that might have caught them gave way, so their bodies crashed to the ground. Firemen had urged others onto the fire escapes next to the window, but the fire escapes very quickly crumbled in the heat, and those who made their way onto them burned to death on the hot iron. In the end, 123 women and 23 men died in the fire. Because ninth floor women didn't get the alarm, because the doors jammed and fire escapes were inadequate, because ladders wouldn't reach, the death toll happened mostly there on the ninth floor. In the aftermath of the fire, there was despair about how workers could work in a good shop under such conditions. The newspapers declared that the fire had actually trapped the victims in the building. The newspapers also excoriated fire departments for not being able to have extended ladders and reach the victims. But the bottom line was the death of 146 working people. Rose Schneiderman, who had been one of the leaders of the strike that had tried to organize the workers at Triangle just the year before, participated in a meeting a few days after the fire. There, she gave a speech in which she reprimanded a faithless public. I would be a traitor to these poor burned bodies, she said, if I came here to talk good fellowship. We have tried, you good people of the public, and we have found you wanting. This is not the first time girls have been buried alive in the city. The life of men and women is so cheap 
and property is so sacred, there are many of us for one job. It matters little if 146 of us are burned to death. We have tried you citizens, she said, speaking directly to the reformed community. We are trying you now, and you have a couple of dollars for the sorrowing mothers, brothers, and sisters by way of a charity gift. But every time the workers come out in the only way they know how to protect against conditions which are unbearable, the strong hand of the law is allowed to press down heavily upon us. And here, of course, Schneiderman was referring to the arrests of workers that the police made during the strike. The strong hand of the law, she continued, beats us back when we rise to protest the conditions that make life unbearable. I know from my experience it is up to working people to save themselves. The only way they can save themselves is by a strong working class movement. In this short speech, Schneiderman threw down a challenge. She asked those who witnessed the Triangle Fire to support working women's unionization because working women had to be given the power to protect themselves. She no longer trusted any but workers. She would soon change her mind. Schneiderman would be one of the forces that pushed the Women's Trade Union League into seeking legal protections for women.